Welcome to the Jose Aliaga Show. Today I have a special guest, a political activist, a Republican, a member of the Republican Party, and the president of the Women's Federation for the Republicans. Her name is Linda Lee Tarver. Hi, Linda. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy as I'm honored and privileged to have you here. I know uh, most people that are that involved in, in, in politics know you. And uh, for people that don't know you here in Independence Town, Chick Clarkson, it's going to be very um, interesting because people don't know much about uh, what the political activists do. And so tell, tell us a little bit about, uh, oh, introduce yourself. All right. <laughs> I'm Linda Lee Tarver. I'm president of the Republican Women's Federation of Michigan and honored to be the first African-American elected as a statewide president. I have been involved in politics for many years. I was the, a precinct delegate and executive board member for Ingham County Republican Party. Then I became the chair of the Ingham County GOP and vice chair of the Michigan Republican Party. In 2016, which was a great election, by the way, mm -hmm. 2016, I was elected as president of the Republican Women's Federation of Michigan. It's a 101-year-old organization. It started in Detroit, cool. and women who came together to help usher in suffrage in Detroit. And so I am, I've been a member for the organization for many years, but it's Republican women getting politically active and running for office and getting education and training. Oh, that's good. That's good. I do remember when I met you, I, I attend to um, the 2012 election um, or campaign election for Mitt Romney, Governor Romney. And then when I was there, I remember I was sitting in, I was lucky to get my VIP seat. And <laughs> I was sitting here and I have this space right here, open space. And then suddenly I see you you're walking there with the Lieutenant Governor. I was thinking, who is, who is she? We were looking lady coming in. And you came and sit next to me and you knew everybody. Everybody was saying, hi, Linda, hi, Linda. I says, who is that? I says, oh, she's the president of that, you know. Yeah. Oh, wow, I was very impressed to meet you and that, you know, everybody. Yeah, so I was like, wow, I need to be friends with her. I was thinking <laughs> that time. Well, but, you are a friendly person. So part of the reason why a lot of people do mm -hmm. know me mm -hmm. is because of my activism in the Republican Party. It's a volunteer-led organization, and a lot of the positions I've held have been just a labor of love, and they're unpaid. And so I've been honored to meet some wonderful patriots in Michigan, I and see. I consider them patriots. And Linda, we have some pictures, and I want to share with you. Absolutely. Everybody. Let's see picture number one. There's a very nice picture. Can you tell us about the logo? Absolutely. So the Republican Women's Federation of Michigan, it's part of the National Federation of Republican Women. It has a um, statewide connectivity to other state presidents and clubs across the state. So we are federated and it's a wonderful thing to do. It's a wonderful thing to have and it's a wonderful thing to, to be a part of. There are state presidents across the nation and we have a great sisterhood, it's connectivity. So it's not just an operation mm -hmm. that is, you know, a, a nice little get together with a, a few ladies. It's very organized and very professional and it's very well connected. And Linda, why, I, why or how you become a member of the Republican Party? Well, I started yelling at the TV at one point. I was listening <laughs> to Rush Limbaugh and I threw something at the TV in my, you know, ex-husband said, why don't you just get involved? You're a Republican, get involved. And I decided to come out of the political closet. A lot of my family members are Democrats. My, although my parents were Republicans, I was kind of a lone Republican amongst my siblings and decided that I wanted to get involved. And I knew that I was a Republican based on the platform. And at the year that I joined, this platform um, is what defines the Republican. And so each party has a platform of what they believe and what positions they have and who they are. And I decided to read them. And I read both and I, it affirmed to me that I was indeed a Republican and I looked for a place to land. I found the Ingham County Republican Party. I was a little nervous about going to the first meeting and I decided that I was going to um, go in and I thought they were gonna be all white men, mm -hmm. rich, white men mm -hmm. and that I would be out of place. And when I got there, that was nothing of the sort. There were a lot of minority folks there. There were women of all 
socioeconomic backgrounds. There were men there, farmers and people who were business owners and uh, from, again, every spectrum of the financial background. And I was very pleased that it was a place that I was well received. I was not looked upon based on the color of my skin, but mm -hmm. based on the work that I was willing to commit, mm -hmm. my conservative principles and the content of my character. Mm -hmm. And it's true. I think that media is trying to create a perception that the Republican Party is a big club of rich and white people, mm -hmm. which is not true. It's not. Because I know as well that we Absolutely. have minorities and people that support, again, the platform, yes. which is important. That's right. And Linda, we have another picture right there. I want to share with you. Women for Trump. <laughs> and that, that is very close. I mean, that's... Yes. <laughs> so, that, this photo is okay. very controversial for some. Mm -hmm. Women do support Donald Trump. I think it's fake news to believe that women do not support our president. Mm -hmm. More women gave to Donald Trump in terms of the filings. His uh, contribution? contribution for his filings than any other candidate. Oh, wow. Yes, women. Mm -hmm. And women have also been in great support of Donald Trump. The fake news have continued on to say that women hate him and they have called him different kinds of names, but we love our president. And women have benefited, black women, in terms of unemployment, the educational opportunities, the job opportunities, our 401ks are absolutely loving our president. So we love our president. So for what you're saying, um, you know, when a president goes for re-election, the first thing that always people look at the economy. And the economy means that uh, that Donald Trump is doing a good job. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we know that that is true. Mm -hmm. He is doing a phenomenal job mm -hmm. and he should be reelected in 2020 because of it. Mm -hmm. And what he's promised, he's delivered. His promises came from here. Mm -hmm. These are what the Republicans have decided. These are the positions that we want our mm -hmm. president to take mm -hmm. and that he's done those things. Mm -hmm. That's true. And I think for what we see, and that I think is going to help a lot of Republican Party and Donald Trump for re-election. Absolutely. Because the economy is doing well. Uh, let's see the other picture. We All have right. more pictures here. Oh, wow. Yes. That's a, and, and let it, and let, let it, rip. it rip. rip. Yeah, this is a good, good I love show. it. Yeah. The Let It Rip, this is one of many um, news um, outlets and television outlets that I was participating in as one of the co-chairs for Donald Trump in 2016. I had the opportunity to be interviewed with Tim Skubik, oh. Off the Record, and other organizations, radio, television, and news, print media. It was a phenomenal opportunity to talk about the president that I absolutely believed should be president. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful that he was elected in 2016. But there are questions that people have on positions and our impressions as far as a woman, as far as minorities, African-Americans mm -hmm. and others. So it's right. important to um, be proactive in getting our message across. Right, right. Um, well, we have another picture right there. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, <laughs> yes. This is my favorite. This is me and the hot dog guy. Yes. My husband is Clint, the hot dog guy in downtown Lansing. I, um, this picture is very special because he is a small business owner mm -hmm. and during right to work, he was under the tent. I'm not sure if you remember the tent coming down during the debate on right to work. Well, my husband was underneath the tent and, um, he truly affirmed his conservatism and being a Republican after that, because the Republicans stepped up and they were such a blessing to him and to us, but also as a small business owner, we see the impact of regulations mm -hmm. and over-regulations for even a small hot dog vendor. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Regulations, any regulations impact businesses. Absolutely. We're having too many regulations. And I remember when President Trump was running, he says, if we create, if the Congress passed one law, I will request the Congress to eliminate two. That's right. We That's, have right. Many, That's right. That's right. Let's see the next picture. I know we have a, I have a lot of pictures. Oh, yes. Wow. wow. That's me and the big guy. <laughs> Um, yes. I met, I had the pleasure of meeting the president face to face, mm -hmm. probably about four or five times mm -hmm. and participating in different events while he was in the room. And I have had the pleasure of doing that. It's been an honor to get to know him as the person. So 
as a surrogate for the president, it was quite important mm -hmm. for me to know mm -hmm. um, a little bit about who he is mm -hmm. and be able to speak to that with authority and mm -hmm. with a personal knowledge and not mm -hmm. what I think of him, but what mm -hmm. I know of him. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, absolutely. We have more pictures, right? But let's see. Oh, wow. Yes, this is the Republican Women's Federation of Michigan. It mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. uh, organization for which we are, I am mm -hmm. the president of, and it's a, it's a beautiful thing. I love that we have mm -hmm. about a thousand women across the state. We have 22 clubs, so it's a wonderful thing. And we have a website there. So can we put the picture again, please? I just want, because there's a website yes, there, and yes. I know a lot of people that want to be, they're looking for more information. Are you Absolutely. Oh. This is the um, rwfm.org. It has information about who we are, our clubs, and our membership and what we do. We are a volunteer-led organization, each of our clubs are led by volunteers who just have a passion for politics and a desire and the skill set to lead and talk about our party and our platform. I see. So also in that website, when they look, people, they're going to be looking for information, they will be able to see more like activities, events. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Nice, nice, nice. Good. Our Facebook page is okay. on the Facebook RWFM um, Republican Women's Federation of Michigan. So anyone can go there for their more uh, events on the Facebook page as well. I see. Do we have more picture? I think we have one yes. more. Oh, look at it. Yes. Looks great there. Thank you. Thank you. So that was where, where, that was where? at the Michigan um, GOP State Committee meeting. Oh. So as president of the Republican Women's Federation of Michigan, I am honored also to sit as a voting member of the state committee. Mm -hmm. And it is a great group of people who make decisions and look at the policies and how we are going to usher in victories for Republicans. Oh, I see. Our, our chairwoman is um, Laura Cox. Oh. I'm our RNC chairwoman is also a member. She's a member. Laura Cox is a oh. member. Ron and Romney McDaniels is a member of the Republican Women's Federation of Michigan. Betsy DeVos is also a member of the Republican Women's Federation of Michigan, uh, Kathleen Burden, uh -huh. and a great number of women across the, the state of Michigan. I see. So how do you see that the next election in 2020, we have our local candidates. I know John James is going to be running yes. against for Senate. Um, it's going to be against uh, Gary Peters, right? That is the, that's the goal, yes. That's go so how do you think, how do you think 2020 is going to go in Michigan? I believe that 2020 will go in our favor, and I will mm -hmm. tell you this. I wrote an op-ed in the Lansing State Journal that talks about the art and the deal. It is a play on Donald Trump's book, The Art of the Deal, and if you look at it, there were projections that Hillary Clinton was going to win Michigan by okay. large numbers. Right. But we knew that coming in, the size of the crowds and the swell and the excitement uh, for Donald Trump, our candidate, leading up to November, um, the November election was significantly higher. Um, Hillary Clinton was at the Eastern Market in Detroit. She couldn't pull 500 people. Mm -hmm. They overinflated that as 5,000. You can't put 5,000 right. people in the Eastern Market. <laughs> so we, Donald Trump was pulling in 20,000 people. And what I shared in that article was that the um, people who come, the thousands upon thousands of people who come to see him, to just be in the room with him, they will drive long distances. They will wait in line for hours. They will wait in a hot auditorium. They will have uh, just whatever food is available to them. And they will do that just to be in a room to make history. If they will do that, they will also vote for him. Mm -hmm. I mean, it goes to show that they, will, they wouldn't do that without voting for him. Right. And so crowds matter and the enthusiasm matters. I saw the enthusiasm, the kickoff where he made $24.8 million in one day. He made over $100 million since, you know, that um, short time for announcing his candidacy. It's been phenomenal. And I think that the fake news media will try to diminish it. You cannot argue with the crowds. The crowds for the 4th of July. Mm -hmm. right. It was phenomenal. Right. It, 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 was, it was phenomenal. And I see that uh, the support is growing. And he's delivering his promises, which is, is. which is very important. 
I would like to show the people the next picture. Okay. Oh, this is the Republican Women's Federation. Yes, this is a presentation about our platform mm -hmm. training. Mm -hmm. And there should be another photo that we can talk about. That yeah, is it's another picture. Yes, yes. Oh, so this that is, one is that one. Passion yes. about politics. This was written um, about my passion about politics and a little bit about me in the background. So that is the Lansing State Journal. And it is a great article to just kind of view and, and look, read about my parents and how I became a Republican. So it does answer a little bit of questions. The fact that they published that, I thought it was very, I was very honored. But the fact that they published it, a lot of people who, Democrats, independents, Republicans alike, felt that they learned a little bit more about who I am and uh, my journey as a Republican. So it answers a lot of questions. Oh, that, that's that's uh, impressive, very impressive. It was, I was honored. It, yes, yes, yes. I think we have one more picture, I'm okay. pretty sure. Yes. Oh, look at you. So I was in the White House. This, this was 2019, Black History Month. Mm -hmm. I was honored to be invited again to the White House to um, just talk about issues related to African Americans. There was a slew of wonderful leaders across the nation. They're African Americans. I happened to be wearing my pink dress and my pink oh. matching hat. And so it was really uh, an honor to be there. He's done so much for African Americans. And I know that Candace Owens mm -hmm. and others are out there talking about the, the work that this president has done in his administration to assist African Americans in particular. Mm -hmm. I, am, I am an American. I'm not a hyphenated American, but I do know that I am uh, African American and proud to be that. You know, mm -hmm. I'm black and black and proud. And Culturally, I know that the Republicans started in the, the African Americans started in the Republican Party. That's right. And that's where we belong. And it is the principles of the Republican Party that I think that are important for them to know. A Second Chance Act, where um, the president is releasing people who have been put under the um, Clinton and Biden laws, those criminal justice laws that have put people away for life. The president, President Donald J. Trump, is releasing those individuals. He's releasing people, giving them the second chance, and a second chance act is important. And it's important for African Americans to get back on their feet. He's got Dr. Ben Carson, who's working with HUD. Mm -hmm. He's working with um, Opportunity Zones and doing a great work with that. And so it's important that we talk about those things and that African Americans have the facts, not fact, fake news, but the facts. So they'll know that the president is working for us. He's working for us. I posted today um, an article from the newspaper about the number of people who were shot and killed in Chicago, too. It just broke my heart. And I was a little frustrated because um, Rahm Emanuel, the former mayor of Chicago, deemed Chicago a Trump-free zone. And what that means is that our president cannot go into Chicago and help those who are being butchered in Chicago. And they're mostly black folks, and it's mostly gang-related and drug-related and poverty-related, and the people cannot leave. And it's horrific what's happening. And so I called them out on my Facebook post about not protecting the people in that community. I had a cousin that was murdered in Chicago. She was murdered by a black man. They will tear down Ferguson. They will tear down other cities in Missouri. And they will, you know, talk about Black Lives Matter. But Black Lives Matter in Chicago as well. I've got family members and loved ones and friends that live in Chicago and their lives matter. And until we look at Chicago as being the war zone that it is and allow our president to support uh, the efforts of law enforcement there and to bring in troops. It is a war zone, mm -hmm. truly a war zone in Chicago, and I think something should be do done about it. They want to lament six children who've died at the border, um, under border control and border patrol, mm -hmm. but they don't lament the thousands upon thousands of young, innocent children under 10 that have died in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Thousands upon thousands of children that died. They won't lament that. They won't talk about, they'll talk about the conditions of living in 
housing where they have TVs and beds and Play-Doh and games, but they won't lament the issue that the children can barely go to school who are being butchered, robbed, and killed and raped in Chicago. It's a war zone. And yet the liberals who are in control of that organ, that uh, city refuse to allow our president to come in and help those people. And I'm appalled. I'm angry about it. And every year I know that the, um, the death rate and the death toll around the 4th of July occurs higher for Chicago and no one is weeping. They will cry about the people we lamented and we mourned for those who were killed at the, um, the, the country music concert in Las Vegas. And yet this weekend, so many people were shot, maimed. And these are just the people who just the people who have just for this 4th of July weekend mm -hmm. were killed. And it's a tragedy and no one is mourning. And none of the Democrat presidential candidates are looking to find a solution for the south side of Chicago and for the gang issues. And they want to open up the borders for MS-13 to come in or other gangs to come in or other terroristic groups to come in when we're being terrorized already. First of all, uh, my condolence for your cause. Thank it's you. sad. And secondly, it's very sad that that's happening right now in Chicago and that I don't agree in anything with the mayor and the people running Chicago. Obviously, it's a high crime. It's too sad. It's too sad. Hopefully, you know, hopefully uh, we can do something or don't, President Trump can be able to do something about it. But with these obstacles there, the Chicago is doing is sad because it's no bring solutions or improve or Correct. bring good results. On top of that, they want to make it worse. And then they're probably going to blame to Donald Trump, which has nothing to do with Trump when Trump wants to help. And it's kind of sad. But it's good that you're when addressing that because... When Republicans are in charge of a city like Rudy Giuliani, mm -hmm. he, took care of, he took care of New York. Mm -hmm. He took care of New York in terms of um, policing and trying right. to make people safe. That is the role of government. Mm -hmm. is the first is the protection of its people. Period. And if you're not protecting your people, then you are mm -hmm. not running an effective government. And liberal government kills people, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Because if you look at the cities where you have al allowed the death toll to go up because they are African Americans, mm -hmm. this would not occur in Bloomfield. It would not occur in the uh, upper Beverly Hills in California. It would not occur there. They would not allow the carnage to occur there. But they mm -hmm. do allow it in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it, it is sad. It is sad that that's... That's happening. Uh, we can running out of time, but um, for the people that want to be involved, they, I mean, I'm pretty sure after they're here you today, <laughs> they want to actually sign up and they're going to look your website. But how they can be enrolled? They just they can sign up by uh, the website, Absolutely. Facebook. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you want to be a part of the Republican Women's Federation of Michigan, we do take men as associate members. But you can sign up at www.rwfm.org as well. And we also have an opportunity, our phone number is there, and we have an opportunity for you to go on our Facebook page. Look at where we're headed, and I'm doing platform training. So I'm training on the 2016 Republican platform. I'm going around. It's a powerful, powerful presentation. You don't want to miss it. No one wants to miss it. So just make sure that you uh, look at where we're going to be at. Thank you, Linda. Thank you Thank for your work. You. Thank, Thank you for you. being Thank here. You. And looking forward to see you again. Thank we you. Probably wanna, I, I will invite you for sure thank to talk you. about the, the presidential race. Thank you. And thank you so much for being here. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Well, that's all for today. And if you want um, more information about the Jose Aliaga Show, you can go to Facebook and type uh, the Jose Aliaga Show. Or also you can call us at 248-736-7163. Thank you. And God bless you. Bye-bye.